Welcome to r slash pro revenge where a world war II vet gets revenge from beyond the grave I've really liked this girl for a while that I met at a lifeguard certification course And I talked to her while I was there and we I thought ended up hitting it off We exchanged numbers and social media and all that and we messaged for a few weeks before I asked her out to a movie Which she accepted We've been going on casual dates, nothing too serious, and we weren't hanging out at my place or her place even though I'd hinted at the idea for a few weeks before one of her friends, someone that was also at the lifeguarding course that I met and kept in contact with because he was cool, sends me this screenshot. Aren't you an OP going out now? Not really, but as long as he keeps paying for everything, I'll let him take me out more. Girls gotta eat. And why you gotta do him like that? Shrug emoji. He said he felt bad for me because I was nice and that she often does this to other dudes. After seeing this, I asked her to go on a nice date with me to a hibachi grill restaurant. 20 to $40 plates and premium desserts are served here. I got the most expensive thing they had and so did she. We both got fancy ice cream and multiple refills on drinks. I complimented her a lot and smiled consistently before getting up to go to the bathroom and leaving. I was also her ride. About 45 minutes later, I get furious texts from her saying that she had to have her mom come down and pay for it because she didn't have money on her and that we were done. I know it's not a lot and it sucks because I thought she was actually into me but it felt pretty nice leaving her that way. Our next reddit post is from Pikatira. Years ago, my mother and I had just moved to a new dog friendly apartment complex. We had two dogs. One was a Bichon Shih Tzu and the other was a Terrier Poodle Mix. Because of them, we were excited for the community dog park right next to our building. Also to note, our whole building was filled with dog owners, each with dogs ranging from small to huge. Our apartment was on the first floor in the back of the building, all the way in the corner. It was a nice private area for us with how the apartments were situated. Since one of our dogs is a Terrier, he can be a bit barky when we're not home. Though, when we are home, we have a clicker to get his attention, and he's been trained to stop barking and come to whoever has the clicker. Due to our work hours, I was usually home in the morning and mom was home in the afternoon, leaving him alone for a few hours during the day. After a month of moving to our new apartment, we received a note on our door. It was from one of the neighbors. It stated, Dear neighbor, I understand that you are new to this complex, but it is rude to allow your dog to bark. It is ruining my sleep before I go to work and my job is extremely important. I don't care how you do it, but shut your dog up. My mom turned in the note right away to the leasing office as she wasn't sure what to do with it. That's when the office told us not to worry because he had done this to every dog owner in the building. They did ask us to see if we can find ways to calm him down when we're not home. So we did. We found out the kids of the neighborhood liked playing with the power station outside our apartment and that is who we'd been barking at. So we closed off that area to him when we went out and no one was home. We started playing calming music as a way to help as well. Another week goes by and this time we hear a knock at the door. We go outside and we meet our angry neighbor. He explains that our dog has kept him up every day and woke him up with his hours of barking. Both of us had been home that day and our dog had been a good boy and had not excessively barked. I still remember what he had told us when I explained that. I know what I heard. If you can't control your dog, then I'm going to call animal control and have them both taken from you. I did it before and have no problem getting rid of your dogs too. Then I'll get you kicked out for not following your lease and I can do that because I'm very rich and the apartment needs my money. So do something to shut your dogs up or else. After that, me and my mom apologized for what had happened and we went back in. A few moments later, I walked out to get the mail and discovered from another neighbor that he had gone to three other apartments and made similar threats. After some convincing, my mom told the apartment what had happened. We were told not to worry and if he did that again, to please contact them. We also found out that the apartment had offered him an apartment away from the dogs, but he had declined since the dogs were the problem and not him. However, after what he'd done, my mom began to show signs of anxiety and bought a lemon spray bark collar for our dog. While I didn't like this idea, it had put her at ease to go outside our apartment. We did make sure to only put it on him when we were both not at home. A month went by peacefully and then, once again, we get a knock on our door. This time, it was animal control. 
They'd gotten an anonymous report of a dog being abused and neglected in our home. They explained that someone has said our dogs were barking because of neglect. My mom invited the animal control lady inside and explained the situation. We showed her everything we could to prevent our dogs from being taken away. The nice lady noticed how playful and happy our dogs were and figured it was another false call. She explained that they had gotten a few of those from an anonymous concerned neighbor for other apartments in this building. The animal control lady left, telling us that if they're threatened again, to try to get it on record. This event had turned my mom into a paranoid person who became afraid to leave the house, thinking that if she did, then she would lose her pups. Normally, I'm the calmest person in my family, never really letting anyone get to me. But this neighbor had done this to hurt us. So I did my research and discovered a few things that could legally help us. With new information on certain laws and leasing terms, I formed a plan. During a weekend that my mom was visiting my aunt in a different state, I began my plan. I started it by printing out a few things and then sat outside with my phone and a speaker. I began to play a video of a dog barking really loud. I'd figured out which apartment was his thanks to a few neighbors who were also tired of being harassed. I sat there looking across the courtyard to where his apartment was. I waited with a huge smile on my face and as I hoped for, he stormed out and headed over to where I was. I turned off my video and turned on my recorder without him noticing. His face is red with anger as he looks at me sitting there with a smile. I'm sorry, can I help you? I ask him. F you! I effing told you what I'll do to your family if you effing didn't stop your stupid mutt from ruining my sleep. Now, I'm going to get them taken from you and get you kicked out for not doing as I said. I gave you an effing chance. I hope when they take your dogs that they're killed and you and your mom live inside a cardboard box. I gave him a fake, oh dear look and say, so you're saying that I'm not allowed to make loud noises including my dogs barking between the hours of 7am and 11pm and that I went against the law by doing so? You know you did. And you're telling me this from my porch at 2pm in the afternoon? This won't be your porch once I tell the leasing office. Oh no, that is a very serious threat for my dogs and my family, isn't it? F yes it is. I give him a huge smile and turn off my recorder from my phone. The neighbor is confused now and I ask him to have a seat. I have a few things to show him. I pull out my papers and hand him the first one. It was the county's noise ordinance laws. In our county, a dog's bark was considered the same amount of sound as a loud appliance, so they can bark between the hours of 7am and 11pm. Before he could talk, I pull out another paper. This one states that it's against the leasing terms to threaten another neighbor and, after one warning, that the apartment complex has the right to dissolve their lease. He looks at me with an understanding of what he'd done now. I silence him and pull out one last paper. This one was another leasing term I'd found. His face after reading this one had made him turn white. This last one talked about how it was a complete violation of leasing terms to go onto another renter's property and threaten them or their property. This includes the renter's outdoor area. Those found guilty of this violation will have their lease revoked immediately and be forced to leave the apartment within a set time. The scared look on his face was priceless as I silently got up and walked back into my apartment. After he finally left, I called my leasing office and explained what had just happened and agreed to email the recording to them right away. A week later, my mom came home with some news that she learned from the leasing office. The man had been evicted from his apartment and would be leaving later that week. I found out that my actions had caused the other dog owners of the building to come forward and admit what he'd been doing to all of them. After that, there was never another complaint and I threw away the lemon spray collar. My mom still gets anxiety attacks once in a while, but she's been getting help to ease those worries. As for me, I don't regret what I did, I just feel bad that it had to come to this. If this guy was so rich, why was he living in an apartment complex? What kind of idiot moves into a dog friendly apartment complex and then gets upset when he hears dogs barking? I mean, what'd you expect dude? Our next reddit post is from Benign Reaver. This isn't my story, but it's the story of a departed uncle. Rest in peace, Haj. Backstory. In World War II, my uncle Haj was an engineer with the Royal Air Force. He rapidly climbed the ranks and ended up being the head engineer at a local base. After the war, he met his wife of 45 years, Eve. 
It was the typical post-war relationship, without children though, due to complications. He quickly found a job at our village coal mine, known locally as The Pit. He went from engineer to foreman very quickly. The man had a knack for leadership, that's for sure. He and Eve, some of his RAF buddies, and his sister, my grandmother, even went to Spain for holidays, at least once a year before they all retired. After that, whenever they felt like it. The family. The unfortunate truth is that family isn't always nice. My grandmother was his only surviving direct family. Eve, on the other hand, had a large family. Very large. The trouble with large families is that often there's a few bad eggs. In this case, it was quicker to count the good ones. As Hodge would put it, the trouble with eggs is you can only tell the good ones by spinning them quick or dunking them in water. I don't fancy going to prison. More often than not, Eve's family would drop by and ask to borrow money. Not from Eve, she had none. Haj had always been industrious, saving as much as he could and only really spending what he had to, other than the holidays, of course. The Incident When I hit 18, the legal drinking age in the UK, he took me for my first beer, as my dad worked nights and had to sleep. He didn't drink, which was uncommon for him, as he was a regular at the working men's club we were in. I asked him, Haj, how come you're not drinking? I can't in good conscience drink your money without you getting a sniff. Well, I suppose one can't hurt. Don't tell Nip. That was his name for my grandmother, Sheila. But I've just been diagnosed with diabetes type 2. Don't want to take any chances. I'll keep your secret, but you need to tell her just on the off chance. I'll tell her in good time, kiddo. Now get it down before it goes flat. Neither of us took much notice of the people around us, so we didn't notice Eve's nephew in the corner. Five years passed. I've seen him a few times, less than I'd like, because of work and him going overseas. The build-up. I visited my grandparents one day to find my grandmother sobbing, with Haj sitting on the sofa. Put on the kettle, kid. I need to tell you something. I make a coffee for Gran and Granddad, hot chocolate for me, and green tea for Haj. Now, listen up. I've not got long on this wretched planet, but you're not to cry over me. I've been diagnosed with late-stage cancer and couldn't be effing happier to be leaving. Then, he said to Gran, Sorry, Nip. I know you don't want to hear this, but it has to be said. You and yours will be looked after, of course, but you're not to tell Eve and her family. Then he said to everyone, I've made up a new will. I want everyone to go to the reading. I prepared a little gift for the family. Shortly after this chat, we found out he passed away. We kept it from my grandmother that he'd taken his own life. It'd destroy her. Let it be said that Haj was always a man independent of others. He made his choice so Gran wouldn't suffer seeing him deteriorate over time. The Revenge We went to the reading as a family like he asked. It's the only thing he ever asked of us. We'd seen people we never met, never even heard of, so of course there were some sullen scowls across the table. The lawyer said, Now that we're all here, please watch this video. Haj has a message for you all. Then in the video, Haj said, now then, I imagine this will be a shock to most of you, but I had cancer. If you're watching this, I want you to know that some of you made my last few years pleasant. Others, well, we'll get to you. He said to my side of the family, Not one of you came to me asking if I was alright or wanted anything doing. Instead, you asked if I wanted a hand with anything. For this, I thank you. I've never had anyone do anything for me unless they were my underlings in the Royal Air Force, and I didn't aim to start when I found out I was on my way out. You knew me better than most of my close family. I'll tell you if something's wrong. Good on you. Now then, let's get to the good bit. Then, he says to Eve's family, You lot, where do I begin? When I took our Nip's grandson out for his first pint, apparently the walls have ears and one of you overheard me tell him I had diabetes. Shame you had to say, it's a shame it wasn't cancer. Guess you got your wish, eh? The rest of you, whenever you visited me, you asked more often than not if you could borrow money. It's fine, I didn't mind lending it to you, but I did expect to get it back. So here's how this is going to work. I've split my money and put it in a trust with my oldest friend, the lawyer. Nobody is getting a thing till Eve pops her clogs, so don't bother asking. Eve can stay in the house I worked my butt off for until she either dies or has to go into care for any reason. The house is not to be sold until after she dies. Lazy as she is, she's still my wife. Once she dies, the house is to be sold at a reasonable price to the next owners, and the money from that is to be added to the total for my finances and split with the family. 
Eve is on her own and she can do with it what she wants other than add it to my total. My lawyer has been left instructions on this. Now, here's how it'll be split. If you've borrowed money from me and paid it back, you'll get a fair share based on your age at the time of my death. If you haven't repaid the money you borrowed, you'll still get a cut, minus what you owe me. For some of you, I hope you know I'm laughing at your squirming from beyond the grave. Serves you right. Nip, my only living family, you'll get the lion's share of whatever is there to be done with what you will. If you're not wanting to keep it, the lawyer has been paid for any services you may require. Trust him, he's a good lad and saved my butt on more than one occasion in the war. Nip's sons will get a decent chunk to help with whatever you need and your children will be provided for as well. To OP's mom, not once have I heard anything bad about you. You're getting a cut too, like it or lump it. OP, you've been a great help the last couple of weeks. I called you unfairly at 3am to help me out of the bath after finally giving up getting myself out. Sorry you had to see that. You didn't have to help the next day with the decorating either. If you weren't already on your career path, you'd make a fine tradesman. You'll receive a cut to be determined by the near future's events. Use it how you will. To the rest of you, I'm utterly effing disgusted to have known you. I mentioned earlier that Eve can live in the house till she dies or is put into residential care. If either of these happens, nobody is to live in the house. I don't want anyone I don't trust in there. Now quit your crying and go about your lives. Hodge. As you can imagine, people kicked up a stink about this. We nodded to the lawyer and left. Shortly after the funeral, Eve went into a retirement home with her own money. Hodges was locked up as per his request. She had more than enough to keep her afloat for many more years. A couple of months down the line, we all got called back to the lawyer's office, a little bemused. Again, we're directed to watch a video. Hodge said, I'm not surprised that this video has been played. Some of you just don't follow orders. If you're watching this, it means that someone I don't trust was found to be living in my house. I don't give a flip who it is. The lawyer has instructions of what to do next. But for the sake of his voice and sanity, whoever was found in the house against my wishes is now stricken from the will entirely. If others feel they want to share their money with you, that's their loss. You'll not get a penny from me. As it turns out, my cousin, who bullied me in school and her family, as in her on-again, off-again boyfriend, two kids and a dog, had moved into the house after convincing Eve to move out because they needed the house. What they hadn't counted on is nosy neighbors. Haj asked them to watch the house and if they saw anyone new in there or any signs of moving to report it to the lawyer for updates. In return, they'd get a cut of the money he had. They're good people. The lesson? Don't screw with a war vet. <laughs> I mean, that's good advice. Anyone who fought the Nazis is not someone I'd want to tangle with. That was r slash pro revenge. And if you like this content, then let me know by hitting the like button because it really helps my channel grow.